What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I picked up this rib roast from my Rouse's Market in Thibodeau, Louisiana, and I got this bad boy cooked up for a holiday tradition. I'm going to show you how I did it. Get your pot, hit it up! Just like that. All right, so I'm going to lower this temperature to a low setting because the first thing I'm dropping into this pot is butter, and I don't want to burn it. Now, over my prepping area, I got all the flavors to season up this rib roast just right. Look how pretty that is. So you want to let this thing come to room temperature, so we're going to let it sit out for a little bit. Off to the side here, I got eight cloves of garlic. I'm going to take the flat side of a knife and give it a little smash, kind of like this. hi -ya! That helps to get the peeling off. You just work the peeling off the clove of garlic there. And as you can see, it's kind of slid open, which helps release the flavors. So I got some butter here from Rouse's. I'm using unsalted butter, one stick. Let me show you to your seat. Hope you enjoy. So once this butter has completely melted, go ahead and drop in your garlic. We're going to cook that garlic around in this butter and get that nice garlic butter flavor. So I got the award-winning Sicilian extra virgin olive oil from Rouse's. And I rubbed down an 8 to 10 pound rib roast right here. I tell you, I had to tell my wife to get out the room because she was getting jealous of this rib roast. <laughs> so the kosher salt acts like a really good brine for this thing. You want to make sure you use kosher salt, not table salt. Once I got that patted in, I go ahead and grab some paya seasoning. And I do the same thing once again with the paya seasoning. I put a generous portion throughout the entire roast. Get it all patted in, seasoned well. The paya has got a good pepper blend, garlic. It's going to have everything I want. Then I add the black pepper butcher blend from Rouse's. This is what's going to create a really good crust on the outside of the rib roast. And don't be alarmed by spice here, all right? There's a lot of fat on this thing, so that's going to help tone it down. Once I get this pepper blended in and patted down, I then add the Herbs de Provence. This is an excellent blend of herbs that Rouse's sells. It brings about them great aromatic flavors to the beef. They say it's good for chicken or pork, but I'm telling you, it works for beef too. Use this stuff. So at the very end here, I like to pat the rib roast on the cutting board just to make sure I can pick up any extra seasoning. Now I'm checking the heat here. It's about a 300 range. I'm going to increase that fire so that way I can get it up to about 400. So what you see in there is some brown bits from the butter and garlic. It's coming along great. Now that I got my fire up to the 400 range, it's perfect for searing. Listen to that. Mm. At this point, I move some of the butter around on the outside just to make sure nothing's sticking. But everything's just kind of browning. At this point, I preheat my oven to 300 degrees. After searing for a few minutes on one side, I grab the bone here and just give it a turn. Sear another side. And that browning was forming just beautifully. And then after a few more minutes, I flip it again. Whoo, man, look at that. So I took some of the butter here and ladled it over the rib roast. Just to get some of them juices flowing into this thing. Ah, oh, smells so good. And then I flip it again. Ooh. Gotta be careful, man. This thing's hot. Ladled in some more butter and then turned it once again. Now that I got this thing completely seared, it's ready for the oven. And it looks amazing. So at this point, I pop it in the oven and I'm gonna leave it in there for three hours. Not touching it. Just gonna let it do its thing. Now this buttery, browned up goodness, I'm going to add two sliced up onions. And we're going to cook this down in here. This pot is full of flavor right now. And them onions are going to pick it all up. Just going to keep tossing them around. Now some of this might look dark to you guys. Like this, this might look a burnt garlic right here, but look at it in the light. It is brown. I'm telling you, it's all browned up goodness in this pot. So after sauteing for about five minutes, I add some red wine. My Rouse's Market has a huge selection of red wine, so it's easy to grab a nice blend for cooking or even sipping along the way. Hot dash. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so we cook this down here, let this reduce. That red wine is going to help create a nice gravy. And then I'll add a little bit more so the onions can really get tenderized here. But it just comes along so beautifully, and it's a nice little glaze to use for your rib roast. So I went ahead and turned the fire off, covered it up, and just let it sit there till I'm ready. So now the three hours is up. And this thing looks amazing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to want to let this thing rest for 20 minutes. 
Trust me, you gotta let them juices come together. Just let it sit here and rest. And once it is completely rest, you want a very sharp knife to get this bad boy sliced up. You can already see some of the juices coming out right there. So right here, we slice off the bones here, right off the top. That's the first thing you wanna cut. Some people like to gnaw on these little ribs right here. And then I flip this thing over and I remove some of the extra fat here. But I do not recommend cutting towards your hand. Anything could go wrong. Oh! That was a close one. Do not do it that way. And then we're gonna slice this thing up. This piece right here, this end piece. Oh my gosh, people will fight over that. But look at the inside. It's just beautiful, medium. Ah, oh, the juices in this thing. They're just flowing. Look at this thing up close. My gosh. All right, so we're just gonna slice up what we serve in here. The rest of it, we just let sit. It's time to plate up. But uh, man, it smells so good. Now I know some of you guys are gonna be like, where's the rest of it? What else you eating with it? You just gonna eat meat and onions? Look, all right, this is a holiday rib roast. All right, so there's gonna be all kinds of fixings at the table. You're gonna have your stuffing again. You're gonna have probably some sweet potato casserole, green bean casserole, uh, mac and cheese, you know, roasted potatoes, what have you. You know the holidays, they bring about Thanksgiving traditions for two months straight. <laughs> but nonetheless, here it is. Uh, this is, can, can be somebody's portion to bring to the table. So I'm gonna uh, get a little cut of this. Uh, I'm gonna put it down right here and uh, cut myself a bite. All right, there we go. Yeah. Uh, probably good medium. Got some of the, uh, the end there. And... Mm. Oh my gosh. It's so tender. Mm. Oh man. That is really good. Really good. Super tender. A lot of those flavors that we have incorporated on the crust have kind of married into the meat but you still get that natural flavor of the rib roast. I'm eat some of it with the onion now. All right, this is, this is a mammoth bite right here, but uh, you know, such is life. Mm. That is so good. Dude, them onions really bring it to another level because when I seared it in the butter, you know, it's coated with that really good olive oil that Rouse's has, you know, the, the Sicilian extra virgin olive oil. It's super fresh, has such a great earthy flavor to it. But all that seasoning on the prime rib roast, which I don't think that's correct. I think it's just rib roast, but it's, it really reminds me of a prime rib. But on the rib roast, all that seasoning cook into the butter, you know? So you have the garlic, you have the seasoning, you got the natural flavors of onions, and it just gives your rib roast that extra bit of flavor with the natural juices of the meat. Mm, it's so good. It's really, really good. And I tell you, that little bit of crust, you can get any of that. Oh, lights out. Oh man, mm. I think I just got the chills, the free zones. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is a rib roast cooked for your holiday traditions. Like I always say, you do you. But nonetheless, if you do it this way, you'll be satisfied. Trust me. Paya! Thanks.